Welcome to Math as an Art from the Office of Mathematics Improvement. We are so excited that you are joining us as we explore the creativity in math. In this unit, we will explore fraction concepts through art. We can't wait to see what you create. We will be doing a lot of talking throughout our time together. For each task, your teacher will assign you an art partner. During the number sense routine and the lesson activity, you will need to sit near this partner. When you are asked to speak with your art partner, you will sit knee to knee and eye to eye like the students in this picture. This helps you and your partner focus on each other during discussions. At this time, press pause so that your teacher can assign you your art partner. Press play when you are ready to continue. Let's get started with a number sense routine called, Which One Doesn't Belong? The idea is from wodb.ca. We use hand signals to communicate during a number sense routine. These hand signals help us respect our classmates by giving them time to think before saying an answer out loud, allowing others to share ideas, and to keep things moving along so no time is wasted. These signals are held in front of your chest. A fist means I'm thinking about it. A thumbs up means I have an answer or I have something to share. And the last hand signal is how you share that you agree with what someone said. Maybe they're thinking the same thing that you were. Instead of shouting out, I agree, just silently communicate by showing this signal. Look at these pictures. Let's think about which one doesn't belong. Let's take some time to think about this question to ourselves. Press pause, then press play when you are ready to continue. Now let's take some time to turn and talk about our answer to our art partner. Press pause when you are ready to continue. Press play. Now you will share your ideas with the class. Raise your hand to share your idea with the class. Be sure to clearly explain your thinking so that your classmates understand your thinking. Press pause when you are ready to continue. Press play. You may have noticed that you and your classmates have different ideas of why a picture doesn't belong. As a class, were you able to find a reason why for each picture? If not, press pause, discuss this as a class, then press play. I noticed that all pictures include circles. I think a reason A doesn't belong is because this circle is made up of four different colors or patterns. I think B does not belong because it looks like one piece is missing from each circle. For picture C, I notice this is the only picture that is not an actual picture of a quilt. So for that reason, I could explain that that picture doesn't belong. For picture D, I notice that each circle is split into two equal parts. The rest of the pictures contain circles that look like they are split into four equal parts. There are many other reasons that we could include why each picture doesn't belong. When we discuss our ideas, we see new details that we would not have seen on our own. We are now ready to begin our first task. Today, we will make a three-dimensional structure with paper plates. Before we begin our art project, let's use these paper plates to explore fractions. For this part of the task, you will need two paper plates and one pair of scissors. If you do not have these materials, press pause, gather your materials, and press play when you are ready to begin. We will begin by folding one plate into two equal parts. As you fold your plate, be sure that your ends, that the edges of your plate meet up. This will ensure that you have two equal parts. 
press and crease your fold. Now open up your plate. There are two equal parts. We see that each part of the plate is the same size. Now fold your paper plate back into two equal parts. And next, you are going to fold your paper plate like this. Be sure to press the fold to make it crease. Okay, now I would like for you to set this plate to the side. All right, let's get our second plate. We are going to fold this plate into two equal parts. Once again, be sure that your edges meet so that you have two equal parts when you unfold your plate. And you see each part is equal in size. Okay, let's fold our plate back into two equal parts. Next, we will fold this part of the plate into two equal parts. So once again, we are going to fold and make sure that our edges meet. We're going to press the crease of our fold. Okay, so now I would like for you to unfold both of your plates. What is the same about these plates? What is different about these plates? Press pause and discuss this with your art partner. You may have discussed that both of these plates are circles. You see they are the same shape. You may have also discussed that they are both split into four parts. We have one, two, three, four pieces and one, two, three, four pieces on both plates. You may have discussed that these plates are different because the four parts of the plates are not the same shape. Over here, I see I have a wedge shape here. Whereas here, I have more of a bar shape. One of today's learning goals is to partition objects into equal parts. What parts of this learning goal are clear? What parts are unclear? Press pause and discuss this with your art partner. You and your partner may have discussed that you understand equal parts. In first grade, we learn that equal means the same as. We can apply our understanding of equal to make sense that equal parts mean parts that are the same size. You and your partner may have discussed that the word partition is unclear. When we folded our plates, we partitioned our plates. Partitioning means to divide an object into equal or unequal parts. Let's look back at our learning goal. Partition objects into equal parts. Which plate meets our learning goal? Press pause and discuss this question as a class. Be sure to prove your answer by explaining your thinking to others. This plate meets our learning goal because each of the four parts are the same size. Let's check that out by using our scissors to cut the pieces apart. As we see, we can look at our pieces and we can stack them up and see that they are the same. Sometimes it's difficult when we are cutting with scissors to make them perfectly 
the same size. However, we get the idea that each of these pieces are the same. Let's use our scissors to cut the parts from this plate. Are these pieces the same size? They are not. This piece is smaller than the two middle pieces. While the two middle pieces may be the same and the two end pieces may be the same, the four pieces are not the same size. So this plate does not meet our learning goal. You will now need your task one lesson notes. Our goal for task one is to partition objects into equal parts. Let's review our vocabulary. To partition is to divide an object in two parts and we discussed that equal parts are parts that are the same size. Now look at the table. We are going to begin by looking at the circles and rectangles because these shapes are simple to divide into equal parts. Since we explored partitioning a circle into four equal parts, let's start there. We discovered that we cannot partition a circle into four equal parts by drawing lines across the circle like this. We were able to cut the plate and see that the edge pieces were not the same size as the two middle pieces. We can partition a circle into four equal parts like this. Keep in mind when drawing by hand, these will not be exactly perfect. The idea is to get it as close as you can to equal parts. There are many ways to partition a rectangle into four equal parts. Today we will partition it like this. Press pause, then press play when you are ready to review. Here are some ways that we could partition our circles and rectangles into equal parts. As I partition, you will notice that there are times where my partitions are not exactly perfect equal parts. Remember the idea is to get these as close to equal parts as possible when we are drawing. Now we are going to take a look at partitioning our triangles into equal parts. Triangles at times can be difficult because we cannot cut them like this. So for example, if I was trying to cut this into three equal parts, this is not going to work for the same reason why it did not work for the circle. The edges will not match the middle piece. So we have to think about what are some ways that we could partition this rectangle into equal parts. Sometimes having a, a ruler to draw these parts, these lines can make it more clear. 
but here is one way that we could partition this triangle into three equal parts. As you see here, we divide into three smaller triangles that are the same size. For four equal parts, once again, we cannot cut the triangle straight up and down or even across. As you see, this will not make for equal parts. So we have to think about how can we do this. And so the best, one of the best ways would be to break it down into smaller triangles. When I do this, you see that I have one, two, three, four equal parts. Now we are going to look at how we could take this triangle and partition it into six equal parts. Once again, we're going to look at making smaller triangles within this triangle. So my first step is going to be to cut to partition my, my triangle into two equal parts. And then from this point, I am going to draw a line from the side to the corner. I'm gonna repeat it on the other side. And now you see we have one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts. Now it's time to look at our hexagons. Hexagons are shapes that have six sides. Now let's look at how we can partition our hexagon into equal parts. To partition a hexagon into three equal parts, we will partition it as seen here on the video. In order to partition the hexagon into four equal parts, we can divide it into two equal parts and then two equal parts across the top and we have one, two, three, four equal parts. And for six equal parts, we are going to start by partitioning the hexagon into two parts. And much like when we were working with our triangles, we can split this into smaller triangles. And you see we get one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts. Now I would like for you and your art partner to work together to partition the pentagon into five equal parts. Press pause, then press play when you are ready to continue. We cannot partition the pentagon using vertical lines or even lines that cut across as we know from experience that we are not going to get equal parts by doing this. So we have to think outside the box a little bit of how can we get this pentagon into equal parts. And the way we can do this is again through thinking about triangles. I identify the center point and I can draw lines to each of my corners. I can see that I can get it into five equal parts. Now it's time to begin our art project. This is what your final product will look like. For this part of the art project, you will need six paper plates. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your paper plate and you are going to fold it in half and make sure you get some clean edges um, so that you're, you're making sure your edges match before you fold in half. Okay, and this part is really important. You need to take something like your pencil, really press to get that fold. Okay, 
Okay, so let's open our paper plate. How many equal parts have we partitioned our plate into? We have two equal parts. We know that they're equal because we have folded it over and we make sure that the edges meet. Okay, the next step that you're going to do is you are going to take your paper plate and you are going to fold it to where you get, it looks like two equal size triangle wedges. Okay, and once you get it like that, you are going to fold your plate. And once again, you are going to crease it. Okay, now that you have this, you are going to fold this side over. So the goal here is that we get as close to that edge as possible so that we have equal parts. So remember, we're going to crease Make sure our folds are very much so in place. Okay, now let's open up our plate. How many parts have you partitioned your plate into now? We have six equal parts. Okay, we are going to continue this for the remaining paper plates that we have. So we are going to fold in the exact same way. I'm no longer going to voice the instructions. So if you need to rewind the video and rewatch, you can, um, but I will be folding my plates here on camera.
Press pause, continue folding your plates, and press play when you are ready to continue. For this next part of the task, you will need the color wheel sheet, red, yellow, and blue paint, as well as some paint brushes, a brush rinsing cup, and some paper to protect your area. Our learning goal for our art lesson is to employ a variety of strategies and techniques to create art. What I would like for you to do is I would like for you to take a paintbrush and let's get some red paint and I would like for you to place it in the top section of your circle. As we are looking at our circle, let's count the number of parts that are in our circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Our circle is partitioned into twelve equal parts. Next, we are going to count three slices over. One, two, three, and we are going to put yellow paint and this fourth piece over. All right, next we're going to count three slices over from the yellow, one, two, three, and we're going to put blue paint in this section. So right here we have our colors red, yellow, and blue. We are creating our own color wheel. And on the color wheel, these colors are our primary colors. They are called our primary colors because every other color that we have is made by a combination of these colors. And we're going to test that out today. Okay, next. I would like for you to take some red paint and in the slice in between the red and the yellow slice, I would like you to put a dab of red paint and a dab of yellow paint. In between the yellow and blue circles, we are going to put a our slices, we are going to put a dab of yellow. And a dab of blue paint. And in between our red and blue slices, we are going to put a dab of red paint. And a dab of blue paint. It's important that each of our dabs of paint are about equal in size or else we're going to get skewed results. So think about the equal parts we discussed. We want equal dabs of paint. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to take a new brush or you could also do this with a popsicle stick. And you are going to, we're going to take this red and yellow paint and we are going to mix them together to see what happens. As you are mixing, what do you notice is happening? I notice that I have orange paint. So when we blended the colors of red and yellow, we ended up making the color orange. Now let's take a new brush and let's mix our yellow and blue paint. I want you to think about what might happen when we mix these. As we mix these, we now see that we have green. So when we join yellow and blue together, we get the color green. 
Okay, next we are going to take a new brush and we are going to join the dabs of red and blue paint. What color do you think this might make? Okay, as we're mixing, we see that we get a purple from mixing red and blue together. So on our color wheel, we now have red, yellow, and blue, which are our primary colors, and we have added orange, green, and purple. These are our secondary colors, and that is because we can make these colors by mixing the colors of paint that we have. So if you're ever short on paint, you're able to make any other color if, as long as you have your primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. We're going to take it a step farther and we're going to make some additional colors on our color wheel. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to make another color on our color wheels by blending a primary color with a secondary color. So first, let's try to add a dab of red. And then we want to take some of our paint that we created over here. And we want to mix it with that. So in this case, I'm getting a red orange color. You've probably seen on your crayon box that you have a red orange color. So that's based, that's created by mixing red and the secondary color of orange. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to take the same color right here and we are going to mix it with yellow. So we're going to put a dab of yellow paint with a dab of our secondary color of orange. And we get another double name color, orange, yellow, yellow, orange. You may have referred to it as different things, but we see here it makes a slightly different shade than the orange we have here. So these three colors right here were created by mixing other colors. All right next, we're going to do the same thing for the other colors on our chart. Okay, so let's start by putting a dab of yellow paint in our slice beside our yellow paint. And then we are going to gather some of this green paint that we have over here. And we are going to mix it with the yellow paint. As we see, we get kind of a yellow green shade. All right, next we're going to take our blue paint and we are going to mix it with some of our green paint. We get our blue green. Also send a crayon in your box possibly that matches this color as well. So here we have three colors that were created by mixing a primary color. So we had yellow and we mixed it with our secondary color of green to get a yellow green. We have our primary color of blue and we mixed it with our secondary color of green to get a blue green. All right, next we're going to take a dab of blue paint and we are going to mix it with our purple shade that we created. When we mix our purple and our blue, we get a shade of called, we can call violet. Right, and lastly, we are going to mix a dab of red paint with a dab of our purple paint. So we, as we mix it, we see that we are getting a 
reddish purple shade that's slightly different than the other shades we have on there. So to review our will, we have our primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. We can mix red and yellow for the secondary color of orange. We can mix yellow and blue for the secondary color of green and red and blue for the secondary color of purple. Then we can continue mixing our secondary colors with our primary colors and we get the various shades in between. So right here, we have created our very own color wheel. Understanding the color wheel can help us make great color choices for our art piece. The line that partitions the circle into two equal parts is the dividing line between warm and cool colors. Want your art to convey a feeling of warmth? Choose a warm color. Want your art to convey a cold feeling? Choose a cool color. We can also choose if we want our art to convey a calm feeling. Choose colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. For example, we could choose these three orange shades for our art. Since the three colors are similar shades, it gives an art piece a sense of calm. Feeling bold? Choose colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel. For example, purple and yellow, or red and green, or orange and blue will give your art a bold feel. Colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel are called complementary colors. Another choice we could make is to choose colors that are evenly spaced out on the color wheel. These colors pair nicely together. For example, the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue all have three spaces between them. This means these colors will pair well together. Keep this in mind when choosing your paint colors in the next step. Now it is time to make a plan for how you will paint your plates. Use your knowledge of color theory to select your colors. For colors that pair well together, choose colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel colors that are evenly spaced around the color wheel, or colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. You may also choose to use only cool or warm colors. The choice is yours. For my plates, I will be using crayons. However, using paint results in a cleaner look. Since you only have red, yellow, and blue paint, you might have to mix colors as we did on the color wheel to get the colors you want. I am going to use blue, green, pink, and purple. To make a plan, I will place the initial of that color in each part of my plate. For example, I plan on coloring three out of six parts of the front of this plate blue, and the other three out of six will be purple. I will color each side of the plate. On another plate, I will color six out of six parts pink and six out of six parts green on the back. Planning your colors is an important part of the process. Label each part of the plate with the color you will use to paint that part. After labeling, begin painting your plates. Press pause, then press play when you are ready to continue. Okay, for this example, I just colored with a crayon, um, so my colors do not look as nice and smooth as it would if I were to paint. If your plates are not dry yet, you need to skip through this part and come back to this part once your plates are dry. So, um, I am going to show you how you're going to assemble. Um, and so, what you want to do before you start is you want to be sure that your creases are in place. You want to look for where you partitioned it into two equal parts. And what you're going to do is you want those pieces, you want to flip the top of the plate back so that the lines meet like this. Okay, after that, if your creases are nice and in place, then you should be able to pinch right here and it should fold down. If not, you might just have to work with it a little bit and shape it. But if you notice, you get a nice bow tie looking shape like this. So we are going to place a paper clip where those two lines met and it 
creates our little bow tie shape. So we're gonna set that aside. We are going to do this for each plate. Press pause, continue this process for the rest of your plates, then press play when you are ready to continue. Now that all eight plates have been folded into this bow tie shape, the next thing to do is going to be to piece them all together. So what you're going to do is you are going to place two of the plates together like this. So see, they're apart, now they are together. Once you do that, where they're touching here, you'll place a paper clip. And another paper clip on the other edge. So they are now connected. Okay, you're going to continue to connect the pieces in that way. So you just set another plate on top. Makes like a mouth right here. Um, and you continue to clip them in place.
once you have all six of your plates clipped together, you're going to put your first and last plate together by cl paper clipping it in the same place. Okay, once you do that, your 3D structure is complete. Congratulations on making your first art project in our Math is an Art unit. Now it is your turn to show your teacher what you have learned through this lesson. You will complete the Lesson 2 Formative Assessment. Your teacher will give you more information about how you will turn this in. Press pause, then press play when you are ready to continue. We have now reached the math workshop portion of our task. Our math workshop will have four stations. At the small group station, your teacher will work with you to continue the learning about fractions. At the independent task station, you will complete a task without the help of your teacher. You are welcome to work with your peers on this task. At the application station, you will apply what you have learned to a new situation. Collaborating and working with your peers is encouraged at this station. At the math game station, you will play a game titled Spin It, Partition It, Shade It. To play Spin It, Partition It, and Shade It, you will need one paper clip, a spinner, two different colored pencils, and a ruler. Okay, so the very first thing you're going to do is you are going to use the paper clip as your spinner. Okay, so I'm going to give my spinner a spin and I get three parts. So that means I need to find a shape to partition into three parts. Okay, so I am going to pick a shape that I can partition into three parts. So um, I remember in the lesson we partitioned a triangle into three parts. So I'm going to use my ruler to work on getting straight lines. So to do that, I'm going to carry a line from the center I'm going to carry a line to the center and to the corners and then I'm going to shade each part okay so then my partner's going to go. Okay, my partner gets five, so they'll find a shape um, that they can partition into five equal parts. There's several I could do that with, but um, I remember the pentagon can um, divide nicely into five equal parts. So I'm going to draw a line from each corner. The goal is to get it as close to equal parts as you possibly can. By hand, it's very difficult to do so. But I wouldn't want to partition it in a way where I'm not going to get equal parts or else I don't get to clean that shape. Okay, so here I have my shape partition into five equal parts, and then the partner shades it. Okay, so you're going to continue to take turns spinning the spinner, and once you do that, you'll pick a shape. Your goal is to get four shapes in a row, so that can be this way, that can be this way, that can be this way. As long as you mark four connecting shapes, then you will be the winner. It is now time to begin math workshop. Press pause when you are ready to continue. Press play. Congratulations, you have completed task one. See you next time for task two.